Time now for the second in our special series on the population of Africa, which is set to double by 2050 to more than two and a half billion people. A trend that will bring both opportunities but also challenges, among them how to feed all those extra people. 60% of jobs in Africa are agricultural, but much of it subsistence farming, which will now need to feed twice as many people. And climate change is cutting crop yields too. Kenya is at the forefront of trying to improve farming across Africa. Our Africa correspondent Alastair Leithhead has been looking at how to grow more, better and different crops with the help of technology. Good for your health. Good for your health. Good for the farmer. Good for the farmer. Good for the planet. Cooking class in a rural part of Kenya to try and show people just how good traditional foods can be. As a team. Let us work as a team. The many wow. Wow. My name is Francisca Kingo, nutritionist by profession from Ministry of Health. And these are some of the smart foods we are advocating by for the time being. We have songkam, we have finger millet, we have farm millet, cow peas, and green grams and the pinjon peas. <laughs> We, we smashed the green grams, we mixed it with the flour, chapati flour. And now well, the various classes are going on here. Everyone's split up into little groups as they're working through the menu. Just in front here, they're gathering to look at the, uh, the green gram uh, chapatis being uh, rolled out and then fried on a charcoal heater. There's some onions and carrots being cut there for the cowpea sorghum pilau. And that's the beans in this huge pot, which are being stirred and steaming away. They're being pre-boiled. The reason for doing this is to, is to show people how these foods that they're not used to having grown here, um, recently at least, there are ancient foods of course as well, can be used to make really nice meals. And so they're all watching, wrapped, interested to see how they can uh, make exciting foods with these new products. To get the people to eat it, you have to persuade the farmers to grow it. He says they get less rain these days than they used to, and by growing green gram, pigeon peas and sorghum, he'll at least get something as they resist drought. We're, we're sort of standing here looking at the different crops and just in a very small space we've got a real variety. He's got his fruit trees, oranges there. This here is sorghum, pigeon peas here, and this is cow peas that are at our feet. There's just lots of different different crops. This is finger millet. At the head it has, um, it, it looks like a stretch hand with fingers and the, the grains grow on the fingers. Damaris Odeng is a genomic scientist with the International Crops Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics. She's showing me fields where they manually cross different strains to develop the best plants. The ideal finger millet plant is one that is high yielding, early maturing, drought tolerant, resistant to pests and diseases and highly nutritious. And so what you need to do is just bring them close together so that they can naturally cross and then you end up combining all those interesting traits in one plant. Uh, in front of us here are some plastic tubes which contain DNA from one of the crops. We take the DNA from this machine and we put it into this bigger machine. Dr. Prasad Hindri is a scientist based at the African Orphan Crops Genomics Lab in Nairobi. And it sequences the and DNA. The process is called as the sequencing of DNA. They're trying to improve 101 traditional African food crops. These, these are the crops which are already being grown in the shambas and the backyards and in the farms and farm boundaries. If we make them high yielding, if we make them more nutritious, if we make them tolerant to drought, tolerant to diseases, then naturally the food platter which they have is going to become diverse. The technology which we had a year back, it would have taken 15 years. With the present technology, we can finish in the next three to five years. At the end, the farmer with the most profitable and sustainable farm walks away with a monumental prize. This takes a high. A reality TV show called Don't Lose the Plot is Kenya's attempt to make farming cool for millennials, otherwise leaving the farm for the city. Each farmer is given one acre of land to call their own. The main message we want for the young people is for them to look at farming as a business, and not just a business, as a viable business. Patricia Gashinga is the producer and director. Farming has been looked at as a dirty and old man's 
you know, activity. Most of the land is underutilized. And, you know, with the looming food security, we thought, you know, people need to produce more. And you can do that with just one acre of land. You don't need 10,000 acres. Here and across Africa, improving productivity and helping farmers is a big priority, especially when climate change is added to the challenge of a doubling population. That was our Africa correspondent, Alistair Leithhead, reporting.